I'm Lorraine Pascal. I'm a chef, and baking is my passion. When I quit modelling, I tried all sorts of things, like being a car mechanic, an interior designer. Then I found cooking, and that was it. Since then, I've worked in restaurants, I run my own business, and I'm going to share some chef secrets with you. For me, baking is anything that cooks in the oven. Sweet and savoury, classic dishes, delicious new ideas, and baking you really thought you'd never be able to do. But you can. Baking's not always fast, but it's always easy. I really love experimenting with baking. And, and what I love to do is take an old recipe and add a modern twist. So I'm making a strawberry and mascarpone Swiss roll, which is a jazzed up version of the one my granny used to get from the shop. And then focaccia, a modern classic from Bread World. The dimpled surface of this Italian flatbread is strewn with sea salt and rosemary. And it's divine and easy, of course. Glam mac and cheese is my edible comfort blanket. It's a new take on a classic baked pasta I used to eat as a teenager. And then I'm going to tackle so many people's kitchen nemesis, meringue. But fear not, I have a foolproof method. And then I'm using it as the base of a delicious blackberry pear and apple pavlova. It's an all-time favourite dessert for a very good reason. I prefer to grow herbs on my little terrace. So if I need a bit of fruit for baking and I've got some time, I come down to the pick your own. Love strawberries. These look so delicious. I've got a recipe in mind for those. When I was a kid, Swiss roll for me was that cake you had round your nan's house with a soggy fish paste sandwich and a rich tea biscuit. And much as I love my nan's version, rolled straight out of a packet, I thought I'd make my own decadent version. Let me show you how easy it really is. Sorry, Nan. And I just prefer hulling to just slicing the tops off because I think you get more strawberry that way. And if you need to cut them in half, it looks much prettier because you get a kind of heart shape. That's those done. So I've got 250 grams of strawberries here and two thirds of those into the blender with two tablespoons of granulated sugar, roughly two tablespoons. And then they get a nice blitz. Okay, they're done. And into the bowl. And then you need one or two tablespoons of masala. Pop the rest of the strawberries in as well to macerate. Just give it a bit of a stir. That is going to be very good in half an hour or so. So that's the first part of the filling. Now I'm going to make the sponge. Three eggs. Free range or organic if you can. 80 grams of caster sugar. See, the interesting thing with this sponge is there's actually no butter in it. And the only problem with that is you have to eat it all on the same day because it doesn't keep very well. But that's not normally a problem in my house. And oh. then vanilla pod. You can use vanilla extract, a couple of drops, but I just love to use vanilla pods when I can. And then this needs to whisk for a good five minutes on a high speed. You want it to be nice and light and frothy. Okay, that looks ready to me. Okay, now I need 80 grams of flour. I'm going to cheat rather than weigh it into a bowl. I'll just weigh it straight into this one. And just put it around the sides so you don't knock all that lovely air out. And now fold. Just do it really slowly, turning it around all the time. And look, there's some flour that has a naughty habit of just sitting on the bottom. So you want to make sure you get all of those 
bits as well. Right, now this needs a tablespoon of warm water. I'll just get the kettle. This stops the Swiss roll from cracking when you roll it up, when it's all ready to be assembled. And I've got this tin here. It's quite long and shallow, and I've lined it with some baking parchment. And there's the bits hanging over the side, so that when it's cooked, it's easy to take out. So I just pour it in from a low height, because if it's too high, you'll just knock out all those bubbles. Lovely, look at that, nice and smooth and velvety. So I use my palette knife and then just spread it over right into the corners. So this goes into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes at 190 degrees. When the sponge has shrunk a little from the sides of the tin and feels springy to the touch, it's done. Turn it out onto a sheet of baking paper sprinkled with caster sugar and after 10 minutes, gently peel the paper off and leave it to cool completely. Oh, these strawberries look great. They've been macerating for a good half hour and they're all soft and mushy. Just what I want. So I'm just gonna give my master pony cream Another stir, make it easy to spread. For this, I just mix up 250 grams of mascarpone with two tablespoons of icing sugar and two drops of vanilla extract. So I'm just gonna use my palette knife and just spread it on the sponge really evenly, all the way around, right to the edges. Okay, that looks good. And now my strawberries. So just spread on the strawberries and all this lovely juice. Okay, that looks good. Now to roll it up. So just take the first bit and squidge it down. Try and get it as tight as possible. And then just very gently pull this paper up so it rolls over. Try to get it even, well-ish. And then when you get to the end, just really slowly roll it over and if any squidges out, that's fine. And then to finish, a few strawberries. And then you can just spread them over like that. Beautiful. You know, food presentation is so important because if the food looks good on the plate, then people automatically think it's going to taste good. These are a few things that I do. For smaller items like canapes or individual cakes, I sometimes arrange them in rows. And always arrange items in odd numbers. Believe me, this works. Or I go for piles because central height always looks great whether it's a pile of brownies like this or a serving platter of food. Then not too many colours or clutter. I mostly use glass or white plates and stands because I think it just makes the food stand out. And so those are some tricks of the trade. When I make focaccia, I like to use my very special extra virgin olive oil. It's special because it's very, very tasty and very expensive. So I hide it from the other family members who might use it for deep fat frying when they could just use vegetable oil or something else like that. Here it is. So you need 500 grams of strong white bread flour. And two teaspoons of salt, just table salt's fine. And seven grams of yeast. And then some oil, of course my olive oil. 80 ml of that. 
And lastly, 250 ml of warm water. So that goes on the machine for five minutes and if you're kneading it by hand, it will probably take a good 10 minutes. Just take it off and I think that's done. A good way of checking is to just fold it underneath itself like that and then stick your finger in some flour and just stick it in really gently and the dough will spring back pretty much all the way. That way you know it's ready to go. So I just want it flat, a focaccia, it can be any shape, you can even do this in a tin if you like, a square tin, but I like to do mine a rough oval shape. So just squidge it down and it does spring back quite a lot, but if you just persevere it will stay there. Get my rolling pin, just roll it down and it keeps springing back, but just keep rolling it every direction. So I need to leave this bread to rise now. I like to cover it with cling film. So many people do it with a tea towel, but I find cling film is the best way. Bit of oil. The oil will make sure that the cling film doesn't stick to the bread. It's good to cover it because it provides a lovely, cosy environment so the bread can rise. It's nice and warm and airtight, but make sure the cling's not too tight because it needs to have that room to grow up a little bit. Leave that to rise. It takes about half an hour, but it depends how warm the environment is. I like to leave mine by a preheated oven. You can flavour focaccia with all sorts of things, like olives or sun-dried tomatoes or thyme. But my personal favourite is rosemary. Smells so good. Okay, I think my bread's ready. It's lovely and pillowy, look at that. Oh. So focaccia has these dimples in it. You can just use your fingers. So put them in the flour so the dough doesn't stick to them. And then just do whatever pattern you like. Straight lines does look better though. And then the rosemary. So just take your rosemary sprig, like that, and then snip a little bit and stick it in the holes. For the next ones, I like to pinch off the rosemary leaves so you don't get the stubby cut off bit of the branch. And this is just going to infuse the bread with so much flavour. Okay, then some sea salt, a nice sprinkle, extra flavour and it looks really good too. And then this goes into the oven at 200 degrees for about 25 minutes. I've been emailing with some friends and I've been telling them about my soon to be ready focaccia. So I promise them when it's done, I'll send them a picture. very long time ago. I used to work in here. I started off at Frozen Foods, but within a week I was promoted to fruit and veg. And when I was working here, my duties included stacking shelves, taking in deliveries, making sure the quality of the fruit and veg was of a satisfactory standard. 
But when I finish working here, I can wait to get on my bike, race home and have my favourite comfort food, mac and cheese. I still make mac and cheese today, but I add some little extra special ingredients. Thank you. Bye. Pasta has the reputation of being a bit of a family dish, but my macaroni and cheese is really, really glamorous. It's even good enough if friends come round as a dinner party dish. So I've got some pancetta here, and I'm going to fry it in the pan. Need a bit of oil. I love pancetta, it's such a lovely flavour. And you know, you can use bacon as well. Just snip some bacon up, some spring onions. Okay, so whilst those are crisping up, I'm going to get on with the, the white sauce. It's a basic white sauce, and it's equal amounts of flour and butter. So, 40 grams of butter, and I'm going to add some flour. It's 40 grams. And then just mix it in and make a little paste. Get right into the corners, so it goes quite lumpy, and it looks a bit scary. And then take it off the heat and add some milk. I've got 200 ml of milk. I'm not going to add all of it, just a little bit. And then mix. And then some more. And adding it this way means that it won't go all lumpy. So I'm going to add a little pinch of nutmeg and some mustard. And this really brings out the flavour of the cheese. And just keep stirring, and I know it's really tedious, but just keep stirring it, and it'll get nice and smooth. A bit more, rest of the milk there. Okay, and now I add the double cream. And that's 285 ml of double cream. It makes it so much richer. So this needs to boil for about two or three minutes, and it'll get nice and thick. So I'll turn that right up now and leave that to boil. Just keep an eye on it. And I'll grate my parmesan. I've got 115 grams of parmesan here. Don't buy the pre-grated parmesan. I think because it's been sitting around in those pots for so long, maybe the flavour's not as good. OK. Turn that off. That's ready. See, it's lovely and velvety and thick. Now I'm going to add the cheese. Add two thirds of this parmesan into it. And then this dolce latte. My favourite cheese. And two thirds of that is 200 grams. Make sure you add it while it's still nice and hot because you want it to melt a little bit. And it does go lumpy, which is fine, because at least if it's lumpy, it won't be lumps of flour. It's just cheese, lovely cheese. In goes the pasta in the bowl. And the cheese sauce. Ooh, this is gonna be so good. Okay, and now my favourite bit, the pancetta and onions. That lovely crispiness. And just mix it all together. And a bit of seasoning. Again, the embarrassingly large pepper grinder. Pinch of salt. Not too much, because the cheese is quite salty. I'm going to have a cheeky taste. Mmm. Look. The creamy cheese and the crispy bacon and the sweet onion. It's really rather good. Into casserole dish. And then I'm going to sprinkle on some thyme. I'm using fresh thyme, so I put it on at the last minute. But if you're using dried, you can put it in with a pancetta and onion. So, a few thyme leaves. 
Okay, now the breadcrumbs. Let's sprinkle those over the top. This is called gratinating. Then sprinkle on the parmesan. And then nice big blobs of the dolce latte. This is going to be very nice. And you know, if you don't like blue cheese, I know lots of people don't, cheddar or any other strong cheese works just fine. Now this goes into the oven at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. good. The toppings all crisp and the cheese is bubbling. All this needs now is a little sprinkling of parsley to finish it off. And you know, this isn't only dinner party food. You can eat it by yourself too. I think I'll just give a little Try. Look at that. Needs to be tested. Mm. Totally delicious. This is as good as baked pasta gets. There are so many scare stories about making meringues. Like, don't get yolk in it, and you can over-whisk it and under-whisk it. But it really is so much more simple than that. I have got a foolproof way of making meringues. And it is a little bit unconventional, but it'll give you the stiffest, shiniest meringue you've ever seen. I start with the sugar and one egg white with a tiny squeeze of lemon. Then whisk them together add another egg white and keep whisking. Then two more egg whites. Keep whisking the mixture until it becomes very, very stiff. And at this stage, you can turn them around into shells, nests, tart or pie toppings, or the base of a fabulous pavlova. I love pavlova. It's one of my favourite desserts. And although it's not the easiest thing in the world to make, it is very, very quick. Making a pavlova base is just a matter of dolloping the meringue into a circle on some baking parchment with the side slightly higher than the centre. Then it gets baked in the bottom of the oven at 140 degrees for an hour to an hour and a half. It's done when the meringue's firm and crisp on the outside, but still soft and pillowy inside, and a pale, pale beige. At this point, you just turn off the oven and leave the door slightly ajar until it's completely cool. So the pavlova has three layers. This crisp meringue, which is all mallowy inside, and then a soft vanilla cream, and then beautiful tender poached fruits. And I'm going to get on with the fruits now. So I've got four pears here, all peeled and de-seeded, and some apples. Two apples there. Right, now the spices. So cinnamon, beautiful, beautiful spice. Try and get cinnamon stick if you can. And when you pop it in, just remember to snap it to release all those flavors. And then some star anise. Beautiful aniseedy flavour and vanilla. Always use a fresh vanilla pod when you're poaching fruits. It does make a lot of difference. And then pop the whole lot in, the pod and all. Sugar, again, soft light brown sugar that I love. Four tablespoons of that. And then some masala, you need half a bottle of masala. And you can use a good red wine as well, but masala really is the one to go for. Half a bottle in. I can just smell the flavors, it's incredible. And then some zest. You want the zest and the juice of an orange. Get 
as much juice as you can out. It's just going to add all the flavour. And then a nice twist of black pepper to give it a little bit of spice, a bit of a kick. OK, so that's everything in. Now I'm going to bring it up to a boil. And as soon as it hits the boil, I'm going to turn it right down to a poach, which is basically a slow simmer. And then leave that for a good 15 minutes and the fruit's going to start to go lovely and tender. And then I'll turn it off, throw in beautiful blackberries and leave it to cool. So the meringue is baked. The fruit is beautifully poached, and now it's time to make the vanilla cream. So you need 200 ml of whipping cream and 20 grams of icing sugar, and I never bother to sift it. And then you need the seeds of a vanilla pod. Just whisk. So what you're looking for is it to just begin to hold its shape. And then eventually you'll get to this stage it's just about holding itself in the bowl, and that's what you want. Now for the best fit. That's over here. I'm going to drain this fruit, and this poaching liquid is unbelievably good. Seriously, do save it. And I just have to have a taste. It's out of this world. <laughs> It's good enough to heat up and have as a little hot toddy. Beautiful. Now the vanilla cream. So just dollop it on the meringue. And these black flecks look so lovely against the white. It just really breaks it up nicely. And then the fruit. Again, this fruit is brilliant to have on its own. It's really good, so make extra if you can, and then eat it in the morning for breakfast. So you just pile the fruit on, and put extra in the middle, because you want that lovely central height. And then, oh, just get rid of these star anise and bits and pieces, vanilla stick, don't want to eat that. And then just scatter around the blackberries. There you are, beautiful, beautiful pavlova. Like a big piece or a little piece? A uh, big piece, nice. Okay, great. Excellent, thanks. Mmm. <laughs> You've just got that twang. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Baking Made Easy by Lorraine Pascal. The book to accompany the series is available now. Next, of recent health scares about vaccines and GM foods eroded public trust in scientists. Horizon investigates.